Kia ora everyone, in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to use the Vector online platform to create a Vector animal. There are plenty of Vector programs out there, however this one is free to use and we can use it in our browser. It's important as indie developers that we practice on tools that are accessible to us. There are plenty of professional platforms available However, they often cost a lot of money. The awesome thing about this platform is it's free. To go to the Vector platform, go to vector.com or Google V-E-C-T-R in Google and you should be able to find this page. One thing I recommend is creating a login for the Vector program. That way you can save your awesome artwork that you create to the cloud. And that way, if you need to make changes, you can just come back, log in again, and have access to all your artwork. However, if you're just making a one-off art piece for your game, all you need to do is go to the green Use Online button and left-click. This will start up the Vector Online platform. We will now be able to begin creating our animal. Now, our animal of the day is going to be a pig. I'm going to show you how to create all the different parts that make up this animal, how to use some of the different tools, and then how to export and save your work. So let's go over the user interface, the layout of the Vector program. In the middle, this here, this would be our artboard, the place where we can create our art. You could also think of it as like a canvas. On the left hand side, we have these two tabs right at the top here. We have pages where we can change the size down the bottom. We can change the size of our canvas. If we go to layers, this part here will make more sense later on as I start creating vector art. But basically layers act as a different way of separating the different shapes that we create and we can move them around backwards and forwards. We can order them. I'm gonna show you how to use that later on. We also have access to predefined shapes here in this little bar. We have the rectangle, rounded rectangle ellipse. We have the pen tool, which allows us to draw really nice custom polygons, custom shapes. We have a pencil tool if you wanna sketch out a vector line. We can add text, we can upload our own image. And here in the more shapes uh, button here, you have access to some more common shapes that you might use. On the right hand side, where it says nothing selected, this here creates all the properties. When we create a shape, which I'll show you shortly, you'll see you'll be able to change the color here, the shape, the opacity. At the top of the right screen, we have all the different parts and properties, snapping grids, file settings, exporting, which we'll use at the end. And if we want to create a new piece of art, if you would like to learn some more tutorials, this info button here will allow you to find that kind of information. Now let's quickly go over the properties bar. Say I wanted to draw a rectangle. I would go to this bar here on the left. I would select the rectangle tool. I'd come somewhere inside of my canvas here and I would use my left mouse button and draw the shape. Now, you can see that I can resize it. It keeps the shape looking perfect. It's not blurry or anything like that, like a raster image. Now, if I wanted to make that a square and I wanted to keep its ratio, I can press on Shift. If I click Shift and hold, I can then drag the shape as big as I want and it will maintain a perfect square. So you can just keep that in mind. Now if I let go, I'll have my shape, I have these handles on the end, I can use that to reshape. Again if I, if I need to, this awesome thing about Vector is that I can reshape at any time. I can change the angle, holding the shift key allows me to move between preset degrees. Now. Now that the shape is selected, you can tell because of the handlebars on it. I also get the properties, so I can change the colors if I want to. I can change the size of the border as well as its color. I can create shadows. So here if I increase this, you can see there's a shadow starting to appear on the outside of the shape. You know, that gives it a kind of a, a 3D look by having it separate it from the background. I can also create an internal shadow or a highlight or something like that. It gives it some depth. I can also turn off these features by hitting these little toggles here on the right. 
I can also change the opacity. That means the transparency, how much you can see through of the shape. Now, if I want to delete something, all I need to do is select on it and press the backspace. Now, let's start by creating our vector animal. I'm going to create a pig. However, you're more than welcome to create whatever animal you want for this tutorial. Now, to start off my pig, I'm going to start off with a rounded rectangle. I'm going to bring it into the center somewhere here, and I'm going to hold shift, left click and drag. Now, I don't like that color. That's not the color of my pig. I'm going to use a more pinky color. So I'm going to choose something around here. Awesome. Now, to make it easier for us to draw and design our pig, I'm going to put on some snapping tools and a grid. This will help me maintain my proportions to make sure everything matches and also help with my alignment, keeping things the way I want it centered. So all I need to do is go to the top right where it says snapping and grid. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on snapping and I'm going to click on grid. Now you can see this grid of squares here. If I move this rounded rectangle, you can see that it fits perfectly inside of this grid. The blue lines tell me how it's lined up. Perfect. I'm just going to re-stretch that so it fits perfectly in my grid. Perfect. Now, my pig needs a few different features. We need some ears. We need some hooves. We need some eyes with some pupils. We need a snout and some nostrils. So let's go about designing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ears on my pig. So to do that, I'm just going to come down to more shapes and I'm going to grab the triangle. So I'm just going to select it with the left mouse button click. I'm going to find a place and I'm just going to drag it out. Now, that color doesn't go really well, right? Now, the thing about vector images is they're really flat. So to create some depth and dimension, we're going to slightly change the saturation of our uh, pink color, just so that they give a bit of depth and shading. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the triangle to open up the properties on the right hand side. I'm going to select the color and then I'm just going to bring it up so it's closer to the pink body and then just darken a little. Now I really like that, gives it a bit of separation, but I think it's too pointy. It looks more like a horn. So to round that edge off, there's a little trick that we can do. If we click on our triangle shape, we get these handlebars that let us reshape it. But if we double click, double left click, we now have access to the little parts of the shape that allow us to manipulate it to a greater degree. These are called nodes, so we can access the nodes. Now, if you make a mistake, if you're unhappy with a shape, you can click on Control Z to undo. Now, I quite like this little curve that I've created. I'm going to double click again. You can use the internal ones to round them off a bit more. Perfect. I really like that. So I also think that I need to create a little bit of depth inside this ear. Now to do that, all I'm going to do is press Control C to copy, Control V to paste. I'm going to shrink it down a little, and then I'm going to change its color. I'm going to make it a bit darker. Look at that. That's perfect. Now I've got these two shapes here. And I need to create a second matching pair. Now I could go about drawing it, but they'll never look the same again. What we can do is we can copy and paste. Now I can drag left click and select both the objects and bring them across. I can control C, control V and copy them. And then I can flip them around, mirror them. By hovering over it, we get these tools here. This little toolbar that allows us to do a bunch of different useful things. But we want this flipping horizontal. So I'm just going to select it. And now I have a perfect copy of those ears. But there's something else wrong with this. If I want to move it, I have to move them both at the same time. And I don't like that. So these vector tools, they have this awesome feature called grouping. We can group two shapes together so that they become one shape. To do that, we select both the shapes, we right click on them, and we find the group. You can also press Control G as well. 
Now it's treated as one shape. So I'm going to go back and do it to the other one. Now let's have a look at our layers on the left hand side. You can see I have these two groups. If I click on this I button, I can actually make them go invisible. So you can see how the, the layers here reflect the shapes that we've created down here. Now I need to create a pair of hooves. So to do that, we're going to use the pen tool in the left hand bar. So just click and select. We're going to come down to here and I'm just going to draw a pair of hooves. I'm going to go down in a straight line. I'm going to come in a little bit and do a shape like this. Now you can see I actually made a mistake, right? It's not perfect. Now to fix that, I can double click on the shape and using the node tool, I can attempt to get everything perfect, much better. Now when drawing with a pen tool, it often uses the border, also known as a stroke. Now I don't want that. I'm not using a border or a stroke on any of my uh, vector shapes. So I'm just going to select to remove that and I'm going to fill it with a color instead. Now I want something just a little bit darker than the ears, maybe a little bit more pinky. Perfect. Perfect. And we're just going to move it around to get it where we want it. I'm going to copy and paste that. Control V, C, Control V. Bring it across. Perfect. Now we have some hooves. Now, I really want a snout. So to do that, I'm going to go to the ellipse tool. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to drag out in the middle of our pig an oval shape. Now I'm going to try and align it in the middle. And now, as you see, when I move it around, you get these blue guide bar, guidelines. These guidelines, they help you position things. So I want to align it in the middle of the pig body, if I can. There we go. We're getting closer. We're now in vertical alignment. And actually, I want it about here. Perfect. Now, I want the snout just a little bit darker so it stands out a bit more. About there. And now... Perfect. Now I want to draw two nostrils. So I'm going to go back to the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw two ovals. I'm just going to draw one here. Control C, Control V. And then I'm just going to position them. Now see how there's three lines across there? That means those two nostrils are now perfectly aligned with each other. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And that's actually a pretty good color. I like that. It gives it definition. Now we're going to draw some eyes. So we need to draw an eyeball and a pupil. So again, we're going to go to the ellipse tool. And we're just going to press and hold shift. So we make sure it stays as a circle. And we're going to go to color and make it white. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a pupil. So we need another ellipse inside the eye. And just about there, and I'm going to make this black. Now, I don't like the way the eye is sitting in front of the nose. I actually need that to be behind. And I have two shapes that I want to stick together. So the easiest way to do that is to select both the shapes and group them. But I can't really drag and select when it's inside of the pig body. So to select these shapes, we're going to press and hold shift left click on the eye and left click on the pupil that'll now select both shapes i can then right click or control g and group them together i'm now going to go control c control v duplicate them align them and then doing what we did before i'm going to flip it horizontal that way it looks like the pig is looking forward cool that looks Pretty good we're almost done to finish off our pig we're going to send these eyes behind the nostril and the nose so to do that we're going to use the layer area on the left hand side to move them around so all you do is click on the click and shift on both these eye groups here and we're going to drag them until they sit behind the nose. Now you can see that there's a blue line there that tells me that's where I'm going to place these two vector shapes. So if I let go, our eyes 
and now behind the nose. Perfect. That is my pig. So to finish it off, I'm going to drag and select the entire image. I'm going to right click and group it all together. This way I now have one solid object. This is going to help us when we export it. If you've logged in, you can then go ahead and save it. Um, I'm not. You can go ahead and save it. Now, to export our sprite, now, to export our new character that we've created, our new animal, we're just going to click on the grouped animal. We're going to head up to the right side of the screen where it says export. We're going to click it. And now we have the different options of how, what, how we want to deal with this pig. So to do that, we want to click on selection. We only want the grouped animal that we created. We don't want anything else. Then we want to change it from SVG here on the right. And we want to change it to PNG. That's the format that we're going to be using in Construct 3. To finish it all off, we're going to click on Open Tab which will open up a new tab for us. Right click and download the image. Your one might say something a bit different. I'm on a Mac, so I will save this image to downloads. It will then download the file for me and then I can drag and drop it or use it inside of Construct. Awesome, you've now created your very first creation in the vector platform, creating a vector shape. This art form is used widely in a lot of 2D arcade or casual games hyper casual and it's very very good skill for you to learn when making your own games now i want you to have a look at the next part of our lesson where i have a set of different game objects that i want you to go and create including a platform a tree a character and a few different other cultural elements that i would like you to practice the more practice you get the better you'll become at using this platform over the rest of this course you'll be creating one or two characters in both vector and pixel art to continue practicing and developing your skills. Awesome, well done, and I'll see you next time. Kakite, bye.